Hello, everyone, and welcome to Petite to Queen's Claim Your Career Crown podcast. I'm your host, Lynn, and today I'm joined by my superstar guest, Josh Elledge. Well, hey, Lynn, I'm so happy to be here. I've been so excited for this conversation. You're a dear friend of mine. Um, I love, like, in terms of, like, our thought, too, and, like, what we're so passionate about in the areas that we work together. You know, I feel like we're, like, co-evangelists, right, for trying to <laughs> tell the world, like, you know, how they can be enjoying business and sales so much more. So I'm, I'm excited for the listener, too, that gets to hear this conversation. They're going to tell right away, okay, these guys like each other. <laughs> Absolutely. And for those of you in our audience who don't know Josh, he is a U.S. Navy veteran and he became a serial entrepreneur and he built the companies he needs most in the world. So in 2014, he launched Up My Influence to help entrepreneurs like himself and myself attract the perfect audience and grow their authority and influence. Mm. And when he's in the process of doing that, which is amazing, uh, of growing this better than PR agency, he discovered that building he a, a seven-figure B2B system with zero paid advertising is actually what they do better than anyone else on the planet. And I can attest to that. I'm here to testify. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So Josh is also a frequent speaker at business and startup conferences, including Social Media Marketing World, and a Tony Robbins event for his business mastery grads. I mean, wow. Um, he's a weekly consumer expert on Fox 35 Orlando and News 13. He writes a syndicated column for nine newspapers with a total readership over 1.1 million readers. And he regularly appears on more than 75 TV stations across the country. <laughs> so, I mean, he never sleeps. <laughs> Well, listen, it all sounds impressive, uh, but there's a couple of things, right? Time, huh, I've been doing it for a while. Uh, and then also, you know, I'm just a big fan. We were just talking about this before we started recording too, systems. Systems, delegation, people, like, and also like always asking, like, do I have to do this? What is the thing that I can do that, that what's, the, what's the thing that only I can do, and that's what I should be doing. Everything else, I need to empower other people to do those pieces of it. So I can show up and do a TV segment, and my notes have already been prepared by someone on my team who knows what I need to do, that we've worked together for long enough, that I could just show up, hit my mark, and I can perform. Because uh, if it's my name and it's me on camera, obviously that needs to be me. But everything else, uh, yeah, it's it's funny because like, you know, as the CEO of our company right now, um, you know, I start talking about, you know, when, when clients work with us, I'm like, listen, it's it's going to be like 99% my team. They are amazing and so much better at project and account management than I am. You wouldn't want to work with me. I'm pretty much just the song and dance man. <laughs> well, and that's, that's such an important point. Uh, and I think it's going to lead us right into what we're talking about today. Josh and I are going to be talking about how you can shorten your sales cycle with authority yeah. and visibility. And uh, before we get started, I just want to remind everyone who's joining us for the first time, uh, make sure you don't miss a single episode and go ahead and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, share the love and click all five stars for that review. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, Josh, I'm going to start and I'm going to give you some rapid fire questions here. And, yep. you know, we've already set the background. You and I have been working together for some time. And you've actually and your team have gone through our Future Forward Sales training program. Oh, and through so, that look, process, can we pause for a second? Because okay. uh, <laughs> if someone has been on the fence about whether or not they should do it, please do it. Check it out. I, I mean, I just, I actually, I think I recorded a, a video testimonial for you about it too. Um, it was so helpful, not just for me, but the fact that I got to get that knowledge into my organization, that is where it's incredibly valuable. And you talk about return on investment, it's a no brainer. Like if I can really help fix issues within my organization as a result of our work together, like it's a no brainer for ROI. It's a fantastic program. We, we really, what I liked about it as well, um, and then I'll stop to ask. <laughs> 
I'll stop talking uh, about this, but um, you know, is that it covers all of the bases, right? Is so many of us kind of fall into a sales position, but we don't necessarily have much of a formal, let's talk about all the elements of sales because you might be doing some things unconsciously, but what you may not realize you can optimize all of these different areas of sales. Like you might be really good on lead gen, but have you thought about doing this? Oh my gosh. And it's like, if you could, you know, just the exercise of going through that program to stimulate, you know, even if it's like five to 10 great ideas that you can implement within your company, um, that's why it's like the biggest no brainer in terms of ROI um, and why I'm such a big fan of, of your program, Lynn, because, you know, my, like I said, Elisa and I, for my team went through it and it was so good for us, not only to learn the things, but then Elisa and I were able to talk about th these things together. And like, now it's like, you know, we start, oh, that's a great idea. We start talking and they're like, well, you know, you know, Lisa, let's talk about this for a half hour and, and see, you know, how we can implement this. And again, stimulated so many great ideas. They've been so great for our business. And I can tell you that this year compared to, well, you know, the past 12 months compared to the 12 months previous, uh, easily five to six X our business volume <laughs> as a result of implementing some of those great ideas, Lynn. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Josh. I got off script here. And, you know, I want to point out, I haven't paid you, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That was com completely unsolicited. It really is. <laughs> so, but because I do, that's what I'm, you know, we're all about doing the sales training. I'm so passionate yeah. about it. I immediately connected why Josh's B2B system delivers a turbo boost for building rapport with cold leads. And yeah. Josh, I want you to tell us, or tell our audience about why your system is so successful. Okay, so, um, and again, it's it's not that I'm a genius, it's, it's or anything to, you know, close to that. It's just that we've failed at this so many times and we kept testing different things. And finally, we said, well, wait a minute, um, you know, uh, you know, and I've always been one to like with my other company, Savings Angel, we, you know, we did six million dollars in revenue with zero dollars in ad spend. And so the way I did that is by being insanely ill and also illogically generous with people, with audiences in a way that gets them saying, wow, that was really nice of you. Thank you. What can I do in return? And because we get really good at systematizing the value that we give away, it feels very personal and attentive to our guest or quote unquote, you know, our dream customer, right? So they love the experience. And, and it's like, I want to do business with you. So what is the thing that you can do? What is the thing that you can give away that people will say, wow, that's really nice of you. What can I do in return? Most marketers and salespeople don't have the courage. They just don't. Or, you know, sometimes, you know, just the way that it's designed, maybe you're in a position where you just can't. Like, it's like, all you got to do is pick up the phone, just cold call people and try and sell them stock tips or whatever, right? And like, oh, I'm so sorry if, you know, you're in that position where you don't have the freedom to invest in the relationship. But particularly when you sell higher value, higher ticket items, yeah. I'm just telling you that, uh, you know, from our experience and how we were able to grow so quickly is that we are committed to the relationship to the point of, hey, if we if if a sale happens to be an outcome here, awesome. If it's not, I'm OK with that because my job is to maximize the value of this connection right now. What's the highest value that I can bring? Maybe it's working with us. Maybe it's not. But maybe it's an e-intro. Maybe it's something else. That's I want them to always leave with, I like that Josh guy. And if you can have the courage to do this for any length of time, you will find, number one, you're going to love quote unquote sales. Number two, you're going to find that you're just not going to ever need to sell again. And number three is you'll never have to hunt for new leads again because you will have created so much goodwill within populations that you will get unlimited number of people back to you. It's just the way that this works. Here's a great micro example. Let's say that you're a, you know, a, um, you know, a, a, a realtor in, uh, in your part of town, 
right? Yeah. What do you think would happen to your business if you had the respect and admiration because you're just a nice person, people like you, of say four or 500 people? And anytime one of those four or 500 people was asked, who knows a great local realtor, even if they didn't work with you, they said, oh my gosh, we love Lynn. She's just <laughs> such, such a lovely person. She's so giving. She's like, she, I, we love this thing that she does on social media. Like she's always just so friendly and cares about other people. Um, if you have four or 500 people that are your de facto evangelists and salespeople, you're set for life. As a real estate professional, uh, you, you don't have to worry about bus ads. I can tell you that. You can just rely upon this amazing network that you've built and you keep on investing in that. Um, and, and, and I tell you, it's such a joy to do business that way. It, it really is. And, and it is about delivering value and serving up worth. It's just so important. And I think that the other piece that really ties in with your program is that um, you know, you've worked on building authority and visibility for your clients for many years. And so I, I'd sort of like to dive into how did you make that yeah. connection to conceive of this new uh, strategy? Yeah. So, um, you know, like when we work with someone, you know, one of the things that we look for, because we take more of a joint venture approach to how we partner with our, our clients. But one thing that we look for, because we know is going to affect sales in a big way, is their authority. And, and I'll, I'll kind of get into that. So that's my background with all my influence. We primarily did a lot of work around the goal of building authority because authority yeah. is another thing that if you have high perceived authority within an industry, business is going to be easier for you. Yep. And I yep. let's illustrate this. So let's think, you know, again, to the person who's watching or listening to our conversation right now, think of who you are in your industry right now. Now, I'm going to wave my magic wand. And in this case, uh, it's a Sharpie marker, <laughs> a little dry erase marker. Here we go. It's my magic dry erase marker. And by the time I go poof, your authority in your industry is going to have increased by 10 times. You ready? If you're, it's, if you're watching the video, you have to watch me now. <laughs> poof. Okay. Now, you have 10 times the authority in your industry, answer these questions to yourself. What do you imagine now just happened to your sales numbers? What do you imagine happened to media opportunities? How do you think that this would impact your referrals, your partnership opportunities? Again, 10 times the authority, okay? What, how do you think that this would impact your conversion rate, your sales cycles? Okay, so if you really play with this for a while, and, and again, just visualize what this is like, why would you not invest the time and effort into increasing your authority? Yeah. Now, what does that mean? Well, in today's way that we do business, we live in a swipe left, swipe right world. It's not that difficult to improve your authority by a significant margin very quickly by some concerted effort into how you come across online. So the first thing you wanna do is you really have to take seriously your website, your brand, right? Your brand, your design, yeah. like everything around that, your photography, your things visually. If, if, if you send me a cold email and I click, oh, oh. All right. I'm, one of the first things I'm yeah. gonna do is I'm gonna click on your website and I'm gonna take a look at it. And if it looks like amateur hour, I'm sorry, but that's it. That's the end of the conversation. And I'm not going to tell you why I ignored your email, but that's that could very likely be it. And right now, this is what your audience is doing to you. So I would much rather you have a super, super professional one-page website than a bunch of pages that are just look janky. Uh, so yeah. it is absolutely a red flag when you have a bad looking website. So, and Lynn, you know this, like if yeah, you're- Yeah, well, people judge you all the time. It's that instant totally. judgment. And that's if they even open, you know, the email. And that's uh, right. so that's that's really why I love, you know, your approach because it just takes you in a completely different direction to build that rapport from, from a cold, uh, ice cold relationship. Yeah. We live in a swipe left, swipe right world. 
And if you want to get the attention of your customer, you better add up within a couple of seconds. Um, Because all you are doing is you are earning attention a few seconds at a time. Yeah. So, um, so websites, number one, and you're just going to have to bite the bullet. You're not going to have a, you know, obviously you're not going to have yourself a $50,000 website next week if, if you're early stage in business, but can you devote a couple of hours a week toward this? And I'm going to give you a couple of other things to work on as well. Uh, and, and if yeah. you will, it will pay off for you. Uh, and so website is number one. Number two is your social media presence. And when I talk about your social media presence, um, I'm really concerned about what your profile looks like. Do you look like a a, a $20,000 speaker or consultant, or do you look like a $200 speaker or consultant? What do we have to go on? Well, things like your profile image. Okay, have you spent a little bit of money to get professional headshots done? If you're not willing to do that, that's okay, but I'm just telling you, it's gonna be really held against you. So you could use a website called Photo Feeler, upload your profile image, and guess what? You're gonna get feedback on your profile image. And if you don't wanna know that, then you'll just have to live in ignorance because the market will tell you, they're just not gonna tell you. They're gonna tell you by their inaction. And you're like, why do people not do business with me? Well, it could be because your profile image looks horrible or you look shifty or you, you know, it's just something you're giving off a weird vibe and this stuff really matters. It's, and producers know this. Listen, I've been in PR and media. I have 2000 media appearances. I've, I've worked and done media consulting with some very successful uh, business owners, attorneys, you know, all kinds. And I'm just, huh? I'm like, I can watch a video. I'm like, listen, your audience, what you just did right there, you just lost all the audience because of yeah. the way you did that. Like, it's very subtle things. Um, so have the crowd tell you what they think about your profile image. Invest time in your LinkedIn profile. Yes. Duh. Um, so, and if you're like, well, I don't know what that means. Like, honestly, just block off two hours on your schedule. It's worth it. And just say, I'm going to go read articles about how to max out my LinkedIn profile. Yeah. You can go find me on LinkedIn. Yeah, my LinkedIn yeah, profile it. does pretty well. And just copy some stuff that you see me doing. Um, and it yeah, will and it will absolutely you, impact uh, your bottom line. Because when people are vetting you, they're going to they're going to do a Google search on you. And that's my number three. Um, but one of those things that's going to come up is your LinkedIn profile. If you max it out, if it's not coming up on your page one Google vanity search results, that means that you clearly have not spent enough effort on your LinkedIn profile or you have a name and brand that's just way too common, right? Yeah. If you're John Smith and you sell, you know, if you're, you're, you, people will know if you have a very common name uh, to put some other keyword in there. Uh, but, you know, if you search Josh Elledge right now, uh, there was one other guy that, whew, he was on The Bachelorette and thankfully he got eliminated on episode one. <laughs> uh, otherwise I was gonna be in much bigger trouble. <laughs> Uh, but uh, he, he's up in Minnesota, so you'll still see him on page one, a couple of those uh, of, of those spots. But I hope to reclaim my. I, well, I think I am king of the Josh. Elledge, I still have the. I'm the king of the Josh Elledge crown, uh, you know, on on Google. Uh, but eventually, I, hopefully, he'll fade away. Um, the other <laughs> Josh Elledge died a while back, so um, I didn't have anything to do with that. Uh, <laughs> but so. Um, <laughs> So, but your Google search results are number three. So um, when you're working with the media, you better believe they're going to Google you because they want to know, you know, is this someone that we want to be associated with? Do we want to put them on air? And so um, how do you get Google, good Google search results? Well, you just got to start being a giver. You just got to start getting on podcasts, getting on, you know, everywhere you can and giving away value, give it away, stop selling, bring your A game. Um, keep working your way up, start small, work your way up, try to do a podcast interview every single week, um, start, you know, and, and you're like, what? That's not, I, I can't. You just, all you got to do is just reach out to small <laughs> podcasters, start, start, yeah, start there and then just, you'll, you'll work your way up. Yeah, absolutely. And for those of you um, who are tuning in, check out Josh's um, YouTube video on how to improve your LinkedIn profile because it's yeah. really terrific. And, you know, I think that, you know, you touched on something here. Sorry, you know, I'm just having all these kinds of headset difficulties. 
<laughs> today. <laughs> oh, there we are. Uh, but you mentioned your dynamic twist that you have with your program. And it's because you work 100% performance um, and joint venture with the right partners. Yes. Um, I'd love to hear more about why you decided to work this way and why it's yeah. so effective. Well, um, so what I would challenge everyone to do would be to find out if there is a way that you can have skin in the game. Because if you will, it will completely change the dynamic of the conversation. From A, my job is to convince you that you need our solution, right? Yeah. Two, let's figure out if it makes sense for us to work together. And if it doesn't, then I need to know that because I, I have to be protective of our time and our resources and that sort of thing, right? So our approach, what we will do is we work with six figure consultants and we get them to seven figures and it ain't that hard for us. So because we know that our stuff works, obviously we have a little bit more confidence going into this thing. And by the way, if you just don't believe in your product or service, Lynn, I'm sure you've talked about that ad nauseum. <laughs> um, but if, if you just don't have the belief, you're never going to convince yeah. too many people because if you don't believe it, they're going to feel it. You can't fool people today. People know. And I, like I said, I deal with this with media and all, you know, people, folks, you know, actors and that sort of thing. Like I'm either feeling it or I'm not feeling it. And I'll tell you what you said or dead, you know, sad or did that they kind of threw me off. You tipped, we all, we all give poker tells. So, um, so it is really important to, you know, to really, really have that belief and it will just naturally be conveyed. So what we do is we, we do a joint venture model. And again, yeah. not everything, not everyone can go to this extent, but what can you do to, to say, we're going to absorb a little bit of risk in this relationship. And if I deliver the goods, then I get a bigger payday. So essentially when we started our program, we charged 25 grand. We said, listen, we're gonna charge you 25,000. We're gonna build you a system. And our first couple of clients did six figures in 90 days. So we're like, okay, we got, and we got great testimonials. We got great videos. We've got it well-documented. It works. So, phew. <laughs> Cause if it didn't work, it would be a lot harder. <laughs> so thankfully it works. Um, so now we're able to say, listen, um, we used to do this project base. We just don't anymore. Um, we're really only looking for lifetime joint venture partners where we can work on a revenue share basis. And what we'll do is we will, uh, you know, I can make unlimited introductions. I, I just, it's not that hard because of our approach and how we leverage platform and how we, you know, on our outreach, lead gen's the easiest thing in the world. Like anyone could put together a list of a thousand potential customers. That's not hard. Where sales and where salespeople and marketers screw it up is yeah. they reach out, say, hey, uh, uh, you wanna join my webinar? Come on, baby. You know, right? It's like, come on. We know what you're doing. You want to download my free white paper? And it's like, we all know. Here's, okay, I have 14 years studying and leading on consumer behavior. So please take, uh, you know, please listen to what I'm about to share with you. Okay. When somebody comes into my space and, you know, is introducing themselves, the very first thing, if I don't know them, the first question I ask is, what do they want? And I'm trying to figure that out. I'm reading in between the words and maybe I'm looking at your stuff or whatever. What do they want here? Because what I don't, what I don't want is to be sold to. And that's uncomfortable. That's awkward. Everybody hates being sold to. And um, if if you really want to do some research on the consumer sentiment and behavior today and to truly understand the market, you can read books like Marketing Rebellion by Mark Schaefer does a good job. Um, consumers just so, and I don't care who you sell to, if you're, you're a government contractor, right? Um, no, sorry, you're selling human to human. And yeah. uh, B2B, doesn't matter. You're selling human to human. And if someone feels like, okay, what do they want? They want to make a sale? No, thanks. So you have to approach them with something when they ask the question, what do they want? They go, oh, okay, no, that's no big deal. But you gotta have courage to be able to do that. So in our case, you know, um, you know, we are actively looking for guests 
for our podcast. Now, there are other things you could probably come up with that might work, um, might work better for you, whatever. But for us, because we, you know, our solution, you also want to give away the thing that is a great step toward the thing that ultimately you say, oh, well, you said yes to that. So what that probably means is they would say yes to investing in the thing, right? But right. that initial thing that they you want them to say yes to, again, it has to be, you use the term, Lynn, noble intent. And you have to be totally okay with them saying no. If they say, hey, thanks for the free thing. No, thanks, don't need the big thing. You have to be totally cool with that. And if you're not, and it's gonna hurt your feelings, um, <laughs> you're gonna have to do some, work with Lynn. <laughs> that's that, so you gotta work with Lynn. Um, yeah, and, but yeah, and so I, that's- <laughs> It, I, I got to interrupt. You're so dead on with this because that that whole human element. Um, I've been selling, you know, multi-million deals across the globe, and it you are dealing with people, and it's people who make the decision, and you have to respect that. And and you're so true. The way you approach that, that you are delivering value, continuously delivering value, and then throughout the relationship. Um, and and you have a word for it that generosity that just yeah. it just sell with generosity. I mean it's it's like this reverse. Um, you know it, it, the sales come naturally after that. And if a client um, or a prospect isn't doesn't buy, you've still created this incredible experience for them. And remember that very famous quote by Maya Angel Angel. You know it's not what you did or said, it's how you made them feel. And so you have created that generosity of spirit and you put that out there in that network. And you talked about that at the very beginning. Um, it's that's how you become a sales champion um, and just do so many good things for your business. But what's important is that you're actually doing good things for your customers. They need you, um, your product or service um, because it makes their life, their business better, stronger, um, and it's just, uh, sorry, I just get so excited about it. It's just amazing. <laughs> so, and I interrupted you, Josh, because no, um, I mean, no and what I think I would, I want to point out with everybody who's tuning in is what's really cool about this is this whole approach is rather than throwing spaghetti against the wall and seeing what, what sticks. I mean, this is an actual really important lead process where you can truly capitalize on every lead and you're doing it with zero paid advertising right. i mean it's... oh yeah <laughs> oh, yeah um, and in fact um so not only i mean do we do zero paid ads um I, you know one quote i love is the founder of geek squad who said advertising is the tax you pay for being unremarkable you can advertise if you want but people know what you're doing and so, um, you know, my job is to, what can I do? A, again, invest in work on my authority. And by the way, I got to tell you that again, if you're early stage in business, it, it ever, listen, everything gets easier. As long as you keep working on your, your true, you know, you keep on giving, you keep on, you know, build, working on your authority. Um, Cause it really matters. Um, you know, the fact that I've spoken for the Tony Robbins organization, the fact that I've been written up in Forbes, like, I, you know, it really helps because people check that out and they're like, is this someone who can solve my problem? Mm, yeah. Well, this person trusts them. This person trusts them. Maybe. Yeah. And so yeah. Um, as you earn those things, you know, now your conversion rate just went up by 0.02%. And it's like, you know, that doesn't sound like a lot, but that, you know, if you work on something that increases your conversion rate by 0.02% every single week, now yeah. I flash forward a year and that's not insignificant. I'll take that. Yeah. That's now I, I don't know what I did on the math, but you know, it's um, you know, it 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 absolutely adds up. And it you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. You'll get there. Um, Lynn, what was your original question? Because I got so excited and I started thinking about some other things there. I was we were talking about advertising, oh, doing it with no paid ads. Oh, yeah. that was another thing I was gonna say. So now there are some platforms that I think are pretty good depending on you know what it is that you do. Um, you know, in terms of like, how do we initialize awareness, right? And so I think right now, uh, I'm a big fan for B2B, um, LinkedIn Sales Navigator, if you do it right. 
if you're reaching out and getting salesy too quickly, and you know, you're just going to annoy people, and then LinkedIn is not going to like that. Um, so you you want to reach out in generosity, and then people are like, well, that's nice of you. Even cold email, if you're reaching out with the right intent and the right gift, and it doesn't sound spammy or whatever like that, cold email will actually absolutely work. Um, you know, being involved in Facebook, you know, any kind of groups or networks, those absolutely work. But again, you have to be give, 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 give. So let's say, for example, so my wife is a uh, uh, a licensed marriage and family therapist. She's really good at what she does. Um, you know, she doesn't, she's not, it professionally, she's not in a position where she needs to go out and get business now. But if she did, what I would tell her to do is to say, join all these groups that are not family therapy groups. They are, you know, groups of, you know, just groups of people, you know, maybe it's like, you know, a, a neighborhood group or whatever, and find ways, listen for opportunities where you can provide great advice. And you could say, hey, speaking as a marriage and family therapist, what I usually tell my clients on a situation like this is, and then give lots of value. Okay. So what you just did there, did you sell? No, not no. really. But you used language that evoked curiosity. So this gets yeah. into media training, right? So we've done um, you know, work with like a CEO. They're like, listen, we got a two minute C two minute TV segment coming up tomorrow, and you want this outcome. This is the outcome that you're telling me you want. Here is how to say that thing so that the audience doesn't feel like they're sold to, but they want to buy. And they want to, <laughs> they wanted, they they know that it was their idea, but you absolutely planted that seed. Yeah. So, so for in the case of my wife, I'm um, talking about, you know, listen, as a licensed marriage and family therapist, let me tell you what I tell my clients. What did that just communicate? Number one, I've got authority. Number two, I've got clients. You know, I'm actively working with other people. And then you give the value. So anyone, a moderator reading that, would they go, hey, quit selling here? No, because you don't yeah. do a call to action. You have to trust that people know how to find you. Please, yeah. marketers, stop hitting people over the head. Okay, hey, we're we're not stupid. We know how to find you. <laughs> like we know how to you. I don't know if you've heard, but we got this amazing <laughs> new technology called Google, and you can find people, and you can search people on social media. You could click and look at their profile, and then maybe on your profile you have kind of the next step. But as long as people don't feel, as long as people feel like it's always their idea to take that next step, what you're doing is also this kind of old school sales stuff, right? Is that you're stacking a pattern of yeses. And they are the ones that are saying, they're the ones that are like, I keep taking this step forward. I keep taking another step forward. And it's them. It's the customer who feels like they're doing all the stepping. Um, you know, we can get into like some other conversations about how to make it easy, you know, as we start getting into the post first meeting or whatever, because you definitely need to lead there and let them know where else they can keep stepping if they give you buying signals. But um, but yeah, generally, um, that's what you do. You just do a lot of that on as many platforms as you possibly can, and you give it away, and you keep giving it away until you're like, I don't need any more business. And then like you could be like, what we are experiencing right now, Lynn, is that as of when we're recording this, we turned off all of our lead gen, all of our outreach, 16 months ago. And I have got, we have been 100% inbound for 16 months simply because of all of the goodwill that we did yeah. for a few hundred people. And then we just keep on celebrating them. We keep on putting it out there. Hey, we are giving away gifts. If you're this person, well, we'd love to feature you. We'd love to build a relationship, or whatever. And like, we don't even breathe a word about sales to them because it would be highly inappropriate to go again think of this like from a dating metaphor imagine you're on a dating app and you know you're like uh hey babe want to meet my parents hey babe want to meet my parents hey babe want to meet my parents that's what market that's what most marketers do yeah does that work yeah. does that work in tinder i don't know i mean, I, I don't use Tinder, uh, but i would imagine that i'm guessing that that would not work <laughs> No, and, and it's so true. I mean, especially LinkedIn, I see that all the time that yeah. they immediately go for, let's set up a meeting. Here's my, oh. you know, my link. And it's just like, you don't even know me. And then they also ask stupid questions. Like, I'd love to learn more about you. And it's like, 
Did you look at my profile? Did you go to my website? Did you tune into a few of my podcasts? Yeah. This is a self-help situation. Um, mm. And, you know, I, I don't need to tell you, um, I, I, you know, you haven't even tried to build a relationship or spend any of your, you know, in put any kind of investment in here. Mm -hmm. You just want, want, want. And instead, yeah. when you give, 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 and, you know, especially like being on podcasts like this, where we can give really tangible, the, the amount of advice that you've shared, Josh, is just like mm -hmm. blowing my mind. But it's, these are things that people can do right now today. They can literally, after they listen to this podcast, they can go check out your YouTube video on LinkedIn about how to improve their profile. They can start mm -hmm. looking at, I mean, there's so many pieces of advice. They can check out what does their website look like from another, what does their photo look like on Photo Feeler, which is a free tool. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. All these ideas that are simple, easy, actionable items and that this is a give, give, give. And then they incorporate that and they go, well, that was such great advice. I need to, where else is Josh? Where, where else can I find him? Mm -hmm. And that it does build this, um, this generosity and this reciprocity um, that comes back where then they want to know more. Tell me more. I want, I want, mm. I want to, where else are you? What else are you doing? What else are, what other articles have you done? What other kinds of insights can I get? Um, and that is where it naturally then leads from that awareness where then you can, you can transfer them in your sales process to cultivation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, truly. Um, and like I said, at the beginning, when you apply what I'm talking about and it will feel very inefficient, It'll feel scary. It'll feel like, what am I doing? I don't get it. Like why I just show up and give all day, every day. Like I'm not making any sales. And you're right. I believe, um, and you know, it's like if I were to draw this out um, and and I've been, you know, in a lot of those communities like ClickFunnels and kind of the bro <laughs> Uh, traffic conversions, like I, nothing bad. I mean, there's some great people in those communities, but there's a tone that I feel is unhealthy um, before early stage entrepreneurs because they, you get sold a bill of goods. So I think though, that it's quite possible that with great advertising, you could probably get, um, you know, a nice bump right here. And then through advertising, you keep on paying a thousand dollars a month or whatever, and you pay a thousand dollars, you make 1500 you pay a thousand dollars you make 1500 and you're on the hamster wheel right so you might be down here and josh said wait a minute i'm supposed to just give well these guys are making more money than i'm they're bragging about the fact that they made i made mean, ten thousand dollars my very first month when i did this thing right and so you'll look at them and you get shiny object syndrome and you'll get jealous but here's what's going to happen if you keep on working on your inner core strength of 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 business, you know, foundation, right? You keep on working on your authority. You keep on working on your relationships. You're going to get to a point where you just don't have to work very hard. These guys, these guys got to keep, you know, maybe there's some organic lift, but by and large, they have to keep on paying, right? You, yeah. on the other hand, it's going to take, feel like it's going to take forever. And then it's going to go like that. And you don't ever have to work for this. It'll all come naturally because people just love you. Most of our clients, Lynn, say that they get their best business through word of mouth. I hear that yeah. all the time. But they say the problem with this is you can't really scale that. And so that's the thing that we wanted to solve. Is it possible to scale introductions? And it is, but you you can't make you, your end user, your customer should never feel like they are being systematized, they are being automated. Stop with the AI, stop with the bots. Like they have their place and maybe customer service or something like that for consumer level products or low, like where it's yeah. just like, you, there's no way you can handle that kind of volume or whatever. Um, but by and large, if you're selling a bigger ticket item, don't do not put me on your drip campaign because the very first thing I could do when I feel like I'm being automated is I'm going to unsubscribe and I'm going to say, ah, oh, that's a little disappointing. You know, yeah, they didn't yeah. care enough about me to yeah. uh, maintain the, the relationship. And so that yeah. being said, again, this sounds very inefficient and you can, you can develop systems and processes on the back end to facilitate this, but it should feel like someone going to a Broadway performance and they look at the stage and they're like, it's beautiful. It's perfection. 
But what they don't see, the audience doesn't see, is what's backstage in order to make that whole thing happen so seamlessly. And that's where you got to have great CRM management, great cadences, you know, great, you know, you know, if then for your team and like how they are able to backstage, you know, replicate you in a way that's honoring the relationship. But still, like if you have 40, 50, 80 people in your sales cycle or in your that you're actively working with at any one time, one person can't do that. That's just really hard. You got to have a team to to truly yeah. support that if you want to lead in that relationship effectively. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's one of those things that, you know, working on th that I love about what you do, Josh, is putting those in systems, but they're still human to human systems. Um, and technology and automation definitely has its role. Um, but when you are in the, that B2B bigger ticket item, um, you, uh, you need to have that way to, and where it's not just some kind of web tool that they sign up for, right? You know, I mean, where you're really selling directly to the customer, that human interaction is so important. And I, I love what we've been talking about. So I, I just want to touch on one. I think let's sort of wrap it up with one last question. And this is for all the DYIers out there. Sure. And, you know, I, I know personally how much time um, and the impact on resources uh, to create, you know, really mega successful systems. Um, but what do you say um, to the to those people in the audience who don't have the grasp on this heavy lifting that's actually required? And why should businesses look into your B2B system? <laughs> um, again, if you're the, if you're the six figure consultant, that's like, well, listen, you know, my customers love me. Um, you know, I go to an event and I generally pick up great business that way. Um, you know, I get great word of mouth. Um, that, but yet you're like, but man, we'd love to scale a little bit faster than what that allows. Um, then, you know, whether or not we work together, I mean, that's kind of up, to, you know, we need to have a conversation see if we're, I mean, it would even be appropriate um, to consider that. Um, but, um, cause a lot of times, you know, when we look at this, we have five main criteria. We really look yeah. at a relationship almost from like an investor standpoint. Okay, so we, number one for us is we have to have great culture fit. Um, yeah. and if you're a shark or like you look at people as just numbers, forget it. Like I'm, it's just a non-starter. We're not going to work with you. Um, because we're going to introduce people and then you're going to try and systematize them and they're going to hate it. And then it's not going to work. Yeah. Right. You have to be relationship first. That's number one. Number two is you have to have a big enough ticket item. If you're selling a $300 product, it just, the economies just doesn't work. Um, you need yeah. to be selling at a minimum a five to seven thousand dollar product, but ten to twelve gets a little bit more comfortable for us. We have clients that sell hundred thousand dollar products. So because again, if we decide to work with together, we're gonna do this based on joint venture rev share. So we need to make sure that there's enough to work with. Um, number three, um, we're gonna take a look at your authority. We need to make sure that um, if we make all these introductions. You know, again, we don't want them to go to your website and have them go, ick, no, because then it's, it's, there's some other work you got to do first. That's number three. Yeah. And number four is, do we believe that this product would actually sell or do we have evidence that this product has sold before? Because if, if you sold it before, then you can sell it again. It's you have to talk to more people who are, you know, those perfect ideal, uh, you know, uh, client. And that's, that's, that's just really you know, I, I don't want to say numbers game, but you know, kind of law of averages, the population yeah. as a whole. If you built a meaningful relationship with that with them, what percentage of them do you think would probably want to do business with you? If we feel like the that percentage is pretty good, like yeah, I could see a lot of people needing this. Oh yeah, you know, the, when I talk, when I have a great conversation with someone, you know, my conversion rate is you know like twenty percent or something like that. Awesome. And then finally, number five would be, you know, do you have the ability to scale? So if we yeah. say um, well, look, yeah, I'm selling a $10,000 product, but I only want to sell three of them this year. I'm like, eh, it's, it's and then, then we, it gets into a situation where it's opportunity cost for us, where, you know, we have about 60 some other clients and I, I just, I can't take my team off of them to work with someone that only wants to make three sales. So you have to have the desire to do, to honestly, um, we, we prefer that you want to get to seven figures in sales. Um, cause we'll, we'll get there right along with you. 
So that would be that would be our criteria. And again, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of probably maybe like I still don't understand what he does. Where you, if you want to learn, you don't need you don't even have to talk to me or whatever. But um, you can go to upmyinfluence.com, www.upmyinfluence.com slash b to b or you'll see the link at the top of the, or on the page or whatever, and you'll see exactly um, how we do what we do. And by the way, um, you know, for someone who's like, okay, uh, I like this guy and he said something about a podcast. Yeah, we are actively looking for guests for our podcast. We do a, uh, not a weekly podcast, not a like a two, three times a week. We do a daily podcast. In fact, this is gonna blow your mind. We actually do two episodes a day. That's how many people we talk with. Yeah. And so um, if, you know, if you'd like to experience, uh, you know, if you're doing six figures or more in business, please be honest with that because we're going to be asking you on the podcast questions about leadership and scaling and how you did that thing. So if you're just an author, speaker, coach, and you're kind of earlier stage, it wouldn't be the proper venue for you. But if you're otherwise doing very well in business, we would love to celebrate you uh, in front. We have an audience of over 100,000 people on our social media audience we'll be promoting you to. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's amazing. I can't believe you you did two a day along with everything else that you do. Um, you know, we, we we're on our once a week schedule for our podcast. So, well, uh-huh. actually, and then and then for the second podcast, um, it two twice a week. So, but um, I've got a lot of help there from uh, from you and your team on that. So, yeah. and uh, we have this amazing host. Uh, you know, Josh, this has been such a great conversation, and I definitely will will provide that link in our show notes, and we'll also provide the link to Josh's uh, YouTube video on LinkedIn, um, how to improve your LinkedIn profile, um, some of the other things that we've talked about today. Mm. Um, and yeah. Josh, I mean, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing your thoughts about how to shorten that sales cycle with authority and visibility. Yeah, Lynn, listen, I'm a huge fan. Thank you so much for having me. This is so, and I'm so eager to promote this to our audience as well. So thank you so much for having me as a guest. Oh, well, I'm just thrilled. And it's just been such a great discussion. And for all of you who are out there, if you have ideas that you'd like to share, you can leave us a comment in the comment section. You know, we really love to hear your thoughts uh, and receive your input. And if you have a question or would like to suggest a topic for discussion, you can also email us at join the conversation at petite to and to stay current with all of our insightful advice the breakthrough advantages and the free resources that we provide please sign up for our weekly wisdoms newsletter at petite to queen.com so thank you everyone for listening josh thank you thank you thank you for being a wonderful guest and sharing um so much today thank you <laughs>